God bless you and welcome to the part two, the second group of the four categories of people in the church, in the end time. You can access this and other postings on YouTube. Just type or search for ETCDM, which stands for End Time Countdown Messages. Let us pray. Our Lord and God, we thank you for having you as our faithful Father who is always with us, attentive to our prayers and doing them for us. We ask for your mercy on us. We also ask that you keep away from us, the wicked ones, the wolves in sheep clothing you said will arise in the end time. And many are today arising all over as false shepherds among your people in churches. Give us the spirit of discernment and continue to expose them by your light. Help us to be daily prepared for your sudden return. And to occupy, in good works, building your kingdom as you have desired and commanded us. These we ask in your powerful name, Yeshua the Messiah, Amen. Before we continue, I want to again state, as I do, that I have no message of my own. My assignment is to echo the voice of the Lord. To bring the message of good news and of salvation to as many as will listen. To explain the word of God, the secrets of the kingdom of God, and of the coming end time. Just as the Lord by himself has directly unveiled these things, through personal visitations to me. Resulting in the end time books and the end time Bible, ETB. Many millions or billions of people will be made ready through the end time evangelism. And powerful move of the Holy Spirit. They will receive salvation and be delivered. They will be part of the harvest for God's kingdom in the end time of this generation. And they will come from various nations, ethnic groups and tribes, peoples and tongues, as well as races or colors and backgrounds, Matthew 24 verse 14 and Revelation 7 verse 9. You can be part of this by sharing this message with as many as are in your household and contact groups. In part 1, we discussed about the group of the faithful and wise servants, Luke 12 verses 42 to 44. We will continue and focus on the second group referred to as the wicked and unfaithful servants in the church. This is a very terrible group in the body of the Lord, the church, with terrible doings and with a terrible ending when the Lord returns. They are not for the Lord, but directly or indirectly working against him within the church. They are on the side of the enemy and will not enter heaven or the kingdom of God. But will have their eternity in hell and lake of fire with their master. The Lord forewarned about them in Luke 12 verses 45 and 46. Let's read about this group as forewarned in Luke 12 verses 45 to 46, also in Matthew 24 verses 48 to 51. Luke 12 verses 45 and 46 from the End Time Bible, ETB. Verse 45. But if a servant thinks, wickedly, in his heart, my master will delay and not come back for a while. And the servant therefore begins to beat, or mistreat, the other male and female servants under him, and also starts to enjoy himself, feasting with food and drinks, and getting drunk. Verse 46, Such a servant will be caught unawares when his master returns, suddenly and unannounced, in the hour and on a day the servant is not expecting him to come. The master will cut the servant in two, with no further part, in the household of the master. The servant will be removed and sent to join the unbelievers in the place assigned to them. End of reading. As we have read, the wicked and unfaithful servant is not expecting the master to return anytime soon. This group do not expect or they hope the Lord will delay and not come back for a while. Despite all the current happenings, which are signs of the end time, there are some in the church today who do not want to talk about the end time or the coming return of the Lord. They do not believe in the end time. They laugh and scoff, shut down or warn their members against any mention about the end time events or happenings. They view such discussions as counterproductive to their selfish objectives in their church. 
so they focus on messages that maximize their gains and enjoying the best of the current world. Some on the other extreme take advantage of the end time, to deceive their members, to follow them with the promise to get them to heaven. Most of those in this wicked group of servants have positions of leadership in the church. For the scripture tells us that they have other servants under them, Luke 12 verse 45. And we see examples of this group today in the church all over the world, among some of the so-called shepherds, leaders, bishops, pastors, ministers, priests, etc. They are false shepherds, focused on gains from the servants of the Lord in their churches. These wicked servants are like tares sowed among the wheat. Some of them right from their start in the church, are on the side of the devil, and are working with him to lead those who will follow them to hell. Some of them however started well. But over time they became part of the wicked group. This is because they became derailed and went permanently away from the original assignment or call of the Lord. They have refused the Lord's repeated correction for them. They have been enticed by the devil and have gone into alliance with him for worldly gains. Some of them have become their own masters and no longer listen to the Lord. They have placed or positioned themselves in front of the Lord and his kingdom. They want to be in the lead and limelight. For them it is all about wealth making and their ratings on the pulpit in the church or on TV or social media. They have built a cult around themselves, and it is all about themselves. Instead of being faithful, diligent and obediently doing the will of the Lord, they continue to do what they desire or what pleases them. They preach or prophesy for their bellies. They abuse, bully and blackmail other servants or believers or members under their care in their church. They use all kinds of deceptive methods to get those under them to submit to their will, while using the name of the Lord in vain. They intimidate and silence all other voices. With some, it is about false miracles and prophecies. They do not preach about sin, repentance, holiness or making heaven. They stop others in their church from talking about the end time, so that it will not scare their members or customers away. They are in the ministry or church for themselves, their own personal gains and rewards. For them, they see the church they started as their own personal or family business and money-making opportunity. They are deep in their love for mammon. Yet the Lord said you cannot serve God and mammon, money, riches, wealth, or treasures. You have to choose one, Matthew 6 verse 24. They use every opportunity and means to collect money from their followers. This includes through tithes, offerings, first fruits, seed sowing and other means. Most of their messages are not about the kingdom of God. But entertainment, feel good, prosperity, wealth exchange, seed sowing and financial growth. They enrich themselves at the expense of the church members or their followers. They forget the Lord who is the perfect example, who could not be easily differentiated from his disciples. They also forget the examples laid by the apostles in the early church. The early church started by the apostles is our example. They had everything in common for everyone to share together. There was no one among them who lacked. The resources were like a common wealth and was distributed to each person, according to their need, Acts 4 verses 32 to 35. They preach salvation, heaven and the second coming of the Lord. But for these wicked servants, in the church today, it is not really about salvation. They do not see their church members as brothers and sisters, or joint heirs in the Lord. They see their church members as their customers or people to make money from. So sinners come and remain the same. The highest donors and popular ones among them are given lofty front seats, as long as it enhances advertisement, brings more fame and money to the church. Their idea of soul winning is not about heaven or the Lord's harvest in the end time. Rather they see it as business growth and increasing membership, and retaining their members, just in the same manner as secular businesses retain customers, to make more money or profit. 
2. Those in this wicked group of servants preach and live luxury lifestyles. They love good life and the best luxury the world can provide for them to enjoy. The Lord said about this group that they love to enjoy themselves, feast, dine, wine and get drunk, Luke 12 verse 45. To drink or get drunk may not necessarily be physical alcoholic wine or champagne. For people get drunk in their wealth, in pride and boasting, in display and enjoyment of the worldly luxury. For them, their measure of holiness and God's pleasure with them is by the amount of wealth they have accumulated. Then they go about celebrating, showing off and preaching how good and pleased the Lord is with them. How the Lord is rewarding them. They live in luxury at the expense of the church members. They secretly or openly party, dine, wine and get drunk in their luxurious lifestyle, they love and will do anything for it. They acquire all kinds of worldly material wealth, expensive properties, houses, clothes, jewelries, private jets or airplanes, fleets of luxury cars and limousines, etc. for their enjoyment. Some of them also get involved in secret occult groups, where they have entered into covenant with the devil to reward them with wealth and fame. In the open, they will shout Jesus, but in secret, they follow and worship the devil. Their interest is membership, followership, power and money. They shamelessly parade their acquired worldly wealth as demonstration of God's pleasure with them. They forget Satan can also give wealth to his servants to keep them where they are, worshipping him, Matthew 4 verses 8 to 10. They may even perform miracles with the power of the devil or through the original gift God placed in them. For God's gift is without repentance, Romans 11 verse 29. But they are not doing the will of God. And the Lord said that not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only whoever does the will of my Father in heaven, Matthew 7 verse 21. These group of wicked servants in the church are drunk, intoxicated, carried away by their acquired wealth. They are worldly, carnal and ungodly. They remain in that drunken state until they either die or until when the Lord suddenly returns. It does not matter how eloquent they are, preaching with razor-sharp tongues, or how big a following or church membership they have. Those who are not genuinely on the side of the Lord, faithfully building, feeding and tending his flock, they are against him. The Lord said whoever is not with me is against me. Also whoever does not gather with me scatters, Matthew 12 verse 30. They are on the side of the enemy, masquerading as shepherds and using the church and the name of the Lord to further their personal or family interests. Among these wicked servants in the church, some discourage or do not talk about holiness, making heaven, end time or second coming of the Lord because they know the secret cult or alliance they have with the devil. Some use false miracles or prophecies to deceive people. Some entice and promise their followers they will get them to heaven, etc. The wicked servant is not better than an unbeliever. This wicked servant in the church, in the body of believers, has chosen to put his own interest ahead of the Lord's. He is working against the Lord's interest from within the church. This servant is wickedly taking advantage of members of the church and falsely using the name Jesus to promote his or her interest. There is no second chance for them. They cannot be redeemed through chastisement or tribulation. They are already totally with the devil and will team up with the Antichrist or false prophet when the time comes. They will not receive mercy when the Master, the Lord, suddenly returns at a time or an hour he is not expected. This wicked servant will end up together with the unbeliever in the same place. The wicked servants will be rewarded or punished and their portion will be assigned along with the unbelievers, in hell, Luke 12 verse 46. Both the wicked servant of Luke 12 verses 45 to 46 who are in the church but using their talents, positions and opportunities for their selfish gain, and the wicked servant of Matthew 25 verses 14 to 30 with one talent, who does not love the Lord, 
will both not make it to heaven. This is despite both of them being founders, leaders or members of their church, the household of the Lord. The lesson for us today is to faithfully and selflessly use the talents, positions and opportunities the Lord has given us, for His glory in the kingdom of God. Do not be tempted by money, power or fame for yourself at the expense of the church. And do not hide the talent God has given you. But use it to serve the Lord, no matter how small it may think it looks. As we close, I want to thank you for your time. Please remember to forward this message to others. For this and other postings on YouTube, type or search for ETCDM. And all you need to know about the end time are documented in the set of the end time books, as received from the Lord. You can get your copies, as well as the End Time Bible, ETB, from either etcdm.com. If you use Amazon, then search using this phrase, End Time ETB Bible. Next time we will discuss the third of the four categories of people in the church. And until then God bless you and keep you.